Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Maudi and if you don't know me, together with my boyfriend Eric, we've made a long distance bicycle tour across the world. On this channel, Wheels to Wonder, we've documented the whole journey in vlog style videos and we also like to give you some tips and tricks on how to start your own bicycle tour. So let me first mention the elephant in the room. In many countries, stealth camping is not allowed and we suggest to inform yourself about the rules and regulations of the country before spending the night. That said, our experience in almost every country we've camped is that if you get caught by locals or officials, people generally don't mind and are even curious about your journey. But we always try to minimize the risk of being discovered. If you are not familiar with stealth camping, it means camping out of sight on a land that is not designated as an official campsite. For many long distance travelers, and especially those that travel by bicycle or by foot, stealth camping is a really great and unique way to experience a country for an extended period of time. Our approach to stealth camping is always with a few key factors in mind, and that is have respect, leave no trace, be safe and have fun, of course. I have some notes on my computer to assist me. I'll try to keep it short and informative. Very informative. Very informative. Yes. Informative, you know, so then with no me, I'll go play. I'll make you boom boom now. Uh, as usual, I have divided this video in a few different categories, and that is planning, location, tips for stealthiness, wild animals, and dealing with people. I'm also going outside to show you some places that I think are really suitable for a good campsite. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first category is planning. As mentioned before, it's wise to inform yourself on an official website of the country about the rules and regulations concerning stealth camping. Um, most locals and officials don't mind and it might even help you find a place but it's good to know about it and it makes you also feel more at ease on the location itself. Another thing that we often did in the morning is look at the map and estimate the amount of kilometers that we wanted to cycle for the day. We would have a look at the map to look for like green areas uh, that might be like a good potential camping spot. We always mark a few, so if the first one didn't suit us, we would cycle on to the next one. And yeah, we actually never had trouble finding a place to sleep. What we like to do is always arrive a little bit early in the place we decide to camp to kind of feel out the place. Um, does it feel good? Are there any strange sounds or any weird things on the ground? kind of feel out the energy of the area. Sometimes it's just really hard to describe what it is about the area that you don't like. When we did decide to stay, we often went to another place first to have some dinner and come back to set up our tent at dusk. Um, so it was not very easy to spot us. We always had the agreement that if one of us didn't like an area, we would just cycle on. The second category is location. We always made sure before heading out to a campsite to check out the area that no people were around that saw us. Generally, we chose to take a side road from a side road from a side road and so on. Kind of a rule of thumb is that the harder it takes you to get there, the harder it is for people to get there. We always try to choose kind of insignificant places that nobody ever will go to. When choosing a location, try to look at your immediate surroundings. If there are no game trails, no human traces like glass or maybe cigarettes or maybe some bottles lying around so you don't have unexpected visitors in the night. We also always try to avoid crossing fences or any other places that we felt that we shouldn't be. And of course, we also try to avoid camping close to a city. The only exception was in Japan, where we felt safe enough to camp in the middle of the city. As for choosing a location in a more wilder area, we always try to not camp next to the river, uh, that could potentially overflow in the middle of the night during a rainstorm. And we also always camped on a little bit of a higher ground to avoid potentially drift away with our tent in the morning. Also, just beside a small stream can tell you that the place will be swarming with mosquitoes in no time. We're sitting here and I don't know if you can see it, but there are thousands and thousands of mosquitoes outside. There's this little pond that we're standing beside and it's just mayhem. 
We don't only look what's beneath us, but also what's above us. There could uh, be some dead trees that are about to fall over, especially during a hard storm that can be potentially very dangerous. And we also try to avoid um, to camp under beech trees. Beech trees, they tend to have these really heavy long branches that could maybe break off. And yeah, then you can find yourself in some real trouble. So before setting up our tent, we try to look for a flat spot and we first clear the ground from any uh, spikes or potentially glass or any other things that you don't want to uh, damage your tent. When we are looking for a campsite, we always try to make use of the special features of that area uh, to make sure we're not discovered, like for example, a small hill to hide behind or somewhere between the bushes or the trees. Maybe you can make use of some pile of rocks somewhere or something like that. I still remember one instance that was kind of a stupid decision from ourselves. Back then we had to make a quick decision and there weren't many camp spots around. So eventually we decided to camp in the middle of a very small road that we thought was not used for a very long time. But in the middle of the night someone bumped into our tent and it was a very, very scary situation. This guy was luckily very kind and eventually we could camp in his garden. But he told us that there were a lot of cars passing in the middle of the night on that road. Um, so that was a very good lesson for us as well. And yeah, of course, we are not perfect. And in some situations you just find yourself making a decision that was not very wise. So the third category is tips for stealthiness. So perhaps one of the most obvious choices you can make uh, for being stealthy is choosing panniers or a backpack or something else that you travel with that doesn't have like a very bright color and choosing a color tent that blends in into your surroundings. We try to minimize the use of flashlights uh, in the night. We also don't make campfires, especially in places where it's not allowed. And we also don't play any music or make uh, a lot of noise to prevent from people hearing us. It's also a good idea to not mention your campsite to anyone or um, prevent people from seeing you diving in somewhere and check out the surroundings because they could think that you're about to camp there. The last tip that I want to give you here is to be efficient and to know how you can quickly uh, break off your camp and pack up your panniers or backpack or however you are traveling. So the fourth category is wild animals. Bears, wolves, foxes, ticks, mosquitoes, they're all there depending on which country you are traveling in. Generally the most problems we've had was with wild dogs. So we always checked an area if there were any stray dogs around. That can be really annoying in the middle of the night. Some barking dogs around your tent. Luckily we didn't have that a lot. But yeah, it can be a little bit scary. In bear country it's obviously very wise to put your food in a food container or hang it in a tree. Also rodents can be a little bit of a problem. Luckily we didn't have it, but we heard from some people that their uh, tent or their gear was being chewed on by mice and other rodents um, to get to the food. <clears throat> Obviously it's good to throw away your trash or put your trash somewhere in a place where uh, animals can't get to. If we were roaming around our campsite, we use long pens against ticks. Also, um, we try to avoid touching a lot of high um, vegetation because they can easily transfer onto your body and they carry several tick-borne diseases that you really don't want to get. So the last category is how to deal with people. And I mean that in the best way possible, of course. People are always very willing to help and um, if you're not sure about a location to camp, they often would just bring you somewhere or perhaps they will even say that you could camp in their garden or in their house in some countries. So with that said, it's absolutely very important to watch out where you're camping. Perhaps it's like an agricultural land and you're damaging the crops or it's like a private area and there maybe are even no trespassing signs. So just keep that in mind and be respectful. 
sometimes in certain areas we felt quite unsafe because there are hunters or people are using their shotguns to kind of have a celebration. We eventually got used to it and we heard in some countries it's just very normal but it can be quite scary. Just keep in mind they're most likely not on a hunt for you. One important thing to notice is that if you do find yourself in a very sketchy situation with a person and you have to defend yourself, try to avoid using any weapons as they can be used against you. Uh, for example, in the middle of the night, I always like to have a flashlight with a strobe mode. So <clears throat> if like a potential intruder comes into our tent, I can point at the strobe mode at him and he will be kind of blinded for a while so we can uh, have some time to run away. Pepper spray in most countries is not allowed so I can't um, advise you to take that with you but this is a potential um, good way to defend yourself. I also have some things laying around me in the tent at night that I could potentially hit someone with. Luckily I have never needed that. We definitely have experienced some people hanging around our tent that had some strange behavior asking for money, uh, making strange signs. And we always try to stay calm, talk with the people, try to find like a common um, language. And yeah, if we did feel unsafe, we try to pack up as quick as possible and just get out of there. Luckily, those situations were very few in the whole trip. Maybe we have encountered three um, slightly difficult situations in the middle of the night of which two were actually very friendly in the end so at the beginning when we just started out wild camping i was always pretty focused on the sounds and it really got me some sleepless nights i was just laying in my bed and listening to all the things i heard and it kind of got to me and yeah your mind just starts going crazy so eventually when I really got familiar with all the sounds that you can hear while wild camping, uh, I became more at ease. And I always use an eye mask and earplugs to have a better night's sleep. So if you're really unsure about a place and you just don't know where to sleep, please ask the locals and they will almost always help you to find a solution. So now let me take you into the woods and let's check out some different camp locations together. Hi guys, so welcome here in the forest. It's very close to my hometown. It's uh, mixed with all kinds of trees. So you have birch, beech, um, what more, like all kinds of different coniferous uh, trees, uh, oak. So I'm just gonna walk around and find some good things to show you for a good stealth camp. Let's check it out. So this here is already a super nice area. Uh, it would be totally cool for camping, it's so beautiful. If you look up here, beautiful angle of my head. It looks awesome. But it won't be suitable for a good, good campsite because you can immediately notice this structure behind me made by people as a kind of hangout spot. I would totally hang out here too with some beers, have a campfire, which is not allowed. But still, yeah, it's... Uh, I won't be camping here, it's just not nice to potentially have people around your tent at night. So yeah, there's a dead tree here. We never camp near dead trees, except maybe for this one, because as you can see, this one is leaning against another tree, so the chance of it falling is really small. So if there's no other spot, we will probably do it, but in any other case, we will never camp under dead trees. <laughs> so above me behind me here is this beech branch and they are very heavy and uh, long they also call them widow makers which kind of explains itself you really don't want that falling in your tent um, so we try to avoid that at all costs for sure. This here looks like a road that nobody's ever walking, so it could potentially be a game trail and we never try to camp directly on a game trail. Um, yeah, just to minimize the chance of animals roaming around our tent at night, like 
Boars can be quite aggressive in some cases. And we of course also don't want to disturb any animals in their um, ventures around the forest. Oh, I see something super interesting. Look at this guys. This is what I was talking about. For comparison, look at my head compared to this branch and this tree. Can you see it? It's super big and heavy and a great example of why you don't want to camp under a beech tree. So behind me here you can see this place is full of high vegetation, especially nettles and ferns. Um, that is definitely not something that we would choose or prefer. Sometimes we do it if we can't find something else. But yeah, look, it would be just a hassle to get through all those plants and you are really easy, susceptible, susceptible, <laughs> what's the word, uh, for ticks and all kinds of other critters crawling on your body. So this actually looks like a potentially good area. It's clean and it's flat, but I just checked around this area like a few hundred meters and behind me over there, I guess you can see it, there's a small trail, so there's a good chance that in the mornings here, because it's a city park, people will be walking their dog and that's just not good. We don't want to be discovered. Obviously we won't camp here because of the train tracks. It would just keep us awake at night. Here it comes. And one of the last things that I want to point out which is kind of difficult to show you here because almost everything is flat but I would always choose a flat piece of ground to camp on because it's totally not nice at night when you constantly roll off your mat so yeah here I'm gonna wrap it up and let's get back to the video so guys this wraps up my top tips for stealth camping I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it if you have any other tips to share, please leave them down in the comments so we can all learn from each other. Stealth camping is a lot of fun to do. It can be a little stressful sometimes, but it's a very unique, affordable and fun way to experience a country. Once you discover how to do it, it will become easier and easier and eventually you will feel at home everywhere in the world. If you did like this video, I would really appreciate it if you give it a like. Uh, that really helps out our channel. If you haven't already, subscribe down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.